what's up guys it's time to start our chapter number six which is essentially multiple reactions in reactor engineering so by far we've seen how to create some reactors design them and size them how to model them and calculate conversion flows concentrations a lot of stoichiometry and it's time now to see what happens when we add multiple reactions we're going to study actually a lot of terms but it's not that difficult actually they are very simple you just need to learn how to model them so we've seen this so far which is the essential block for chemical engineering or chemical reactor engineering we've saw this last chapter which is essentially just how to get or approve a rate law and now we are here so once we know how to do mole balances we can size and use conversion we s we know when to use concentration and when it changes with respect of uh, volume or its density whatever we know how to use the stoichiometry and formulas into our isothermal design now it's time to see multiple reactions and i'm very happy to tell you that this is one of the at least one of the most important blocks once you get this you will be able to say at least you know all isothermal design because then we're going to see effects uh, with temperature which is very interesting and by the end of the course we're going to see a little bit of this which is mechanism a little bit of catalysis a little bit of residence time distribu distribution a little bit of non-ideal reactors so essentially by the end you're going to see a little bit theory this is very common for reactor engineering graduate courses but for undergrads I think just this backbone chapter 5 and 6 8 and a little bit of 13 14 it's okay so where are we we still have this here what are we analyzing uh, in this moment is essentially multiple reactions so we are here fine perfect now let me show you the content, the overview of the course. I split it into four sections, which is section number one. It's a little bit theory or general theory about multiple reactions. What type of reactions uh, exist? How do we classify them? Then we start studying the selectivity of a desired product and a non-desired product. And we start speaking about selectivity and yield. Now, after you get this little bit theory, we pass to the parallel reactions, or not parallel, when I say parallel reaction doesn't mean that it's parallel reactors, no. It means that you are in the same reactor and you have two reactions that either may take A, may turn to B, or may turn to C. So you need to fight, if you want to produce B, you need to fight this other reaction. We're going to see how to maximize the production of this, let's say, product. And not only that, we're going to see also what reactor shall we choose and which operating condition, like temperature, concentration, flow rates, etc. Now once we get that, we go to the, let's say, series reactions, which is A turns into B and then into C, and probably you want to produce B, so how do you do that? And how do you avoid that B turns into bit C? We're going to see that here. And then we pass to section number four. Actually, this one is very easy. It's not that difficult. Uh, it's very simple to model. Uh, section two is a little bit harder. But once you see section two, you will see that section three is very easy compared to this one. And the final but not least, because this is the most important one, once you know this, I, I will say this is also theory, how to arrange the reactors. But eventually you need to apply it to a problem. We're going to see how to solve complex reactions. So when you have series and you have parallel series and you have different batches or different uh, processes, we're going to see that. We need to once again see a little bit theory, which is the net rate of reaction, which is essentially when you have, well, many reactions, of course, maybe A appears in at least two of them. Well, you need to account for that because maybe in one you're producing A and in the other one you're consuming A. So you want to know the overall change or the net rate of reaction. We're going to visit a little bit stoichiometry to see how to, uh, let's say, model those net rates. 
And then we apply it to the PFR and PBR, which is plug flow reactor and pipette reactor. And we finish with the CSTR. Once again, this is very easy compared to these ones, but I prefer to see the hard ones first. So when it comes into the CSTR, you will see that it's actually very happy, uh, very easy to do. And that's essentially the overview of the chapter. We're going to start in the next video with the section one, which is multiple reaction general theory. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues, or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.